Hi, I'm Elia from Roma 3 University. Welcome to Pedestrian and Evacuation Dynamics 2021. Today I'm here to present you a work about trajectory reconstruction from RSSI Bluetooth signals that Alessandro and me made in collaboration with the Institute Mauro Picone from the National Research Council of Italy. But why are we interested in reconstructing such kind of trajectories? The reason is that we work in museum settings and we know that understanding visitor behaviors is a crucial point for improved visit quality, as well to ensure safety, a hot topic of this pandemic period. However, it allows other many things, like being able to optimize visit patterns and increase revenues, since the more visitors are allowed to enter the museum, the more tickets are sold. Any kind of optimization starts, however, from data and data, in our case, are visitor trajectories. In particular, let us consider a floor plan of a museum. Here we have the plan of Galleria Borghese in Rome, our use case as well as one of the most renowned museums of the world. Once we have assigned a number to each room, let us consider a visitor entering the museum and going from uh, room 5 to room 8, then to room 7 and so on up to the stairs. Clearly, this trajectory is different from a visitor performing an anti-clockwise turn, even if it still reaches the staircases. Gathering many trajectories allows us to obtain the steps we mentioned earlier. We already covered these topics in a previous work of ours, namely Managing Crowded Museums, published on Journal of Computational Sciences previously this year. You can find the video where my colleague Pietro talks more in depth about this topic. I will put link down in the description. In that work, we propose a management solution structured in four steps. The first is about tracking and observing visitors by gathering data and reconstructing their corresponding trajectories. We will see this topic in detail in the rest of the, this talk. Then, we extracted from these trajectories many informations, like the most and the least common trajectories via clusterizations. Such insight allowed us to build a digital model of the museum where we could set up parameters like the entrance rates or the number of tickets sold. Finally, we presented a way to employ this model in order to improve the visit experience by lowering the overcrowding while enhancing the amount of tickets sold per day. In particular, we are proud of these results since recently Galleria Borghese adopted our proposed methodology, actually providing more than a proof of concept to our work. But why we choose Bluetooth tracking? Well, uh, the main constraint in historical buildings, like those where many museums are settled, it makes impossible to install bulky machines like optical tracking system. Bluetooth tracking antennas, on the other hand, can be obtained even with little single board computers, as those depicted in the picture, and it is therefore suitable if no major intervention can be carried out. We can then list uh, the main advantages of these technologies, however, there are also a few little flaws we cannot ignore. We already said that Bluetooth is simple to install. The infrastructure offers feasibility and flexibility as well, being freely rearrangeable even on the fly. And it is of course much cheaper than many other solutions, while providing a sufficient accuracy for room-scale tracking. As I was saying earlier, however, Bluetooth has its own limitation, like the limited resolution and the fact that the transmitter must be given to each visitor at the entrance of the museum. Do mind, however, that this task may be performed along with the ticket check at the ticket offices. Finally, and I should say sadly most importantly, this methodology produces noisy data, as we will see in a moment. So, the main problem is to being able to reconstruct a trajectory like the one reported in the figure, starting from the antenna signal gathered. Here we have a raw dataset corresponding to the blue trajectory, the marker represents uh, the signal in time where different colors correspond to different rooms in the museum, while different markers represent different antennas. As we can see, there are four main problems. First of which, the signal overlapping as highlighted uh, in the northeast inset of the plot. 
Here, in fact, the argmax of the signal oscillates uh, between two rooms, namely the blue and the magenta one, changing repeatedly from one to the other. This is not, however, the only problem, since, as we can see between minutes 80 and 90, there is no signal detection for a small amount of time, or even worse, the beacon is detected from the green room, which is on the first floor, while clearly being in the yellow area, corresponding to the Pinacotec, which is located on the second one. Last but not least, as I lighted from the blue squares uh, at the end of the visit, uh, the visitor could also be detected after he left the museum. In order to face these problems, we proposed a new methodology in trajectory reconstruction. Firstly, we can always sketch a museum as a graph, where each room is associated to a node and two nodes are connected uh, if the corresponding rooms are linked. However, this sole reconstruction does not hold uh, many important information like the fact uh, that there are two floors inside the museum. Starting from this key feature, we can inject such kind of information by means of colors. For example, we would like to distinguish uh, doors connection from uh, staircases connection. And we can do this by giving each edge a specific color. In our case, orange to the staircase and black to the doors. In the same fashion, however, we can also inject concept information about different kind of rooms, like rooms holding the standard temporary exhibition or, for example, the ticket office. Since we have a graph, it is natural to think of the distance between its nodes. In particular, we can define the distance between two rooms as the weight of the shortest path connecting them, keeping in mind that each edge is weighted according to its color, so that traversing a door will contribute much less than climbing a staircase. In particular, we can also consider a penalty factor of beta if the two nodes do not share the same color. We can of course extend this definition to trajectories in a Wasserstein-inspired manner, by evaluating the distance of the rooms they are made of, time bin by time bin. These metric definitions, along with the more standard concept of accuracy, enable us to test our methodology, extracting much more insight about our, the performances. In particular, we present four different metrics. The first one is the naive accuracy, defined as the fraction of correct predictions over the total number of samples. The second one, the bar, corresponds to the mean distance between a sample and the corresponding ground truth. We also refine the bar, building a d bar star, which restricts the mean to the sole wrong samples, offering therefore the mean displacement of a wrongly labeled data. And lastly, we will collect the mean displacement of reconstructed trajectories under the name of uh, W bar. Since the idea behind these different areas comes from the fact that the visitor would rarely move from one to the other, the next step is to clusterize the room on the colors by applying a technique called color contraction. In particular, we can contract over room colors by joining all the connected rooms that share the same color obtaining therefore clusters that represent aggregates of room with the same concept information. We can join rooms on edges colors as well, by selecting a color and joining all the rooms that are connected by that specific kind of edge. Therefore, by choosing a black connection in our example, we obtain the floor representation of the museum. This clustering technique may be applied in combo as well, producing a refined version of the clusterings. And it is this particular feature our methodology relies on. In fact, the idea is to progressively refine the localization by applying a multitude of cascaded localizers. Take for example our representation of Galleria Borghese. Here we can build a first localizer that distinguish uh, on which floor the beacon is located and if the signal comes from either the ground or the second floor then there is nothing more to do since those floor only holds a single room. If however the signal is localized on the first floor we can build a second localizer in order to refine our classification. 
by only taking into account the signals from the proper antennas, thus lowering the noise from the unrelated ones. In particular, we tested our methodology by employing different kinds of localizers that are common in the corresponding literature. As a benchmark, we include the ArcMax being the simplest classifier as possible, as it outputs the room whose signal is higher time beam by time beam. As a second methodology, we applied the convex kernel or a mobile average that applies a triangular kernel over a sliding time window before taking the highest signal. Then we include the three autonomous learning techniques that uh, consider signal from a short time window in order to classify the beacon's position, namely a three-layer neural network, that is a network made of artificial neurons, a long short-term memory capable of inferred relation in time from data, and a random forest as an ensemble of simple classifiers called decision trees. In this two table we show the result of our method, both in an offline and in an online analysis, meaning that in the table on the left we know per each time beam both the signal already transmitted and those that will be transmitted afterwards, while on the table on the right we only know the past signals, making it capable to run in real time. In particular, we show that applying a single LSTM offers an accuracy of 92%. However, the other metrics previously introduced principally highlights that where an error occurs, its weight uh, is considerably high, being more than 7 points. In our setting, an error of 7 points uh, correspond to misplace the beacon uh, more or less uh, from 4 to 5 rooms away, that is actually on the other side of the museum. On the contrary, applying a couple of cascaded classifiers greatly improves the performances, enhancing the global accuracy to nearly 97% while keeping the average error lower than 3, meaning an effective displacement of 1 to 2 rooms. To resume the contributes introduced in this work, we present a graph representation of the museum and we provide a framework to inject expert knowledge in it by means of colors both on the edge as architectural constraint and on the nodes as conceptual features. We used this topological information to infer insightful metrics and to build classifiers made of cascaded localizers. All of this allowed us to greatly increase our performances on rule level trajectory construction. So, thank you for your attention. And please feel free to contact me at eonofri at unirola3.it for any further question. Thank you once again and goodbye.